All right, so we're gonna do a diagnostics on this uh, 2012 Ford Focus and check that out. Something's going on in there. It's not the throttle body, it's in the transmission. That noise. Let's see here. It's got a new, new uh, TCM. It sounds like it's coming out of the TCM. Let's do, let's run some diagnostics on this thing. Let's see what's going on. All right, let's get in the car. All right. It's Ford. Got the key on. He does it with the key on or key off. It doesn't matter what. 2012 it's a dual clutch transmission it's a, it's a manual transmission that the computer shifts the gears and he has a brand new TCM as you saw and it still had the same issue so they just got it towed in today system data loading Check it out. Let's see. It's taking a little bit long. Uh, Sony sound touchscreen. No, it's an aftermarket radio. It's a JVC aftermarket. Let's go ahead and do a fault scan. PCM has two. Transmission control module has two. ABS has two. Instrument panel cluster has six. Body control module three. Front control display interface is one. GPS is one. Oh, there's the TCM right there. What else do we have here? Yoda. Oh, that's the harness for the Toyota. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So there's a TCM right there. There's probably nothing wrong with that TCM. All right, 100%. Yep. Transmission friction element A stuck on. Clutch A stuck engaged. All right. So uh, we're going to look at some data on this thing. I'm going to start it up. I don't like that noise. Look at some live data. Supposedly stuck in high gear, but okay, let's look for both uh, input shafts. This is the output shaft, clutch A motor actuator. See the clutch A motor. I don't like the way it's doing. I think the I think it's the clutch A motor doing that. Okay, let's uh, desired and actual. Where's clutch B? Uh, clutch B. Continuous codes two. Okay, so we got effective input shaft. Okay, here's the raw data <clears throat> on the input shaft. So we're we're in park. So this is the way uh, uh, that you can tell if it's uh, if the clutches are stuck on, it'll show some speed. But right now, it's in park. I'm gonna put it in reverse. So we got it in reverse, neutral, and drive. So the clutch is not engaged. I'm gonna let go of the brake. I'm gonna put it in reverse. Let go of the brake. 
and he does not have reverse. No reverse. Put it in drive, let go of the brake. Actually, he won't move back or forward. Okay, I got it in park. So we're gonna do some uh, some tests right here. Let's go to hot functions. Let's go to uh, transmission adaptation. Transmission control module learning. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the, sh the shift drums are those right there. Those two deals that you see right there, those are the shift drums that shift the transmission. I think one of the actuator motors is bad. We'll find out here right quick. You wish to continue? Yes. I'm on the number two position. I'm depressing the brake. Depressing the brake. The key is on. Function complete. It's gonna power down the uh, TCM. The noise just went away. So the, the transmission control module is powering down and the noise went away. So it is in the transmission, that noise was coming out of the transmission. Check it out. Okay, power down. Let's do the clutch now. Switch to on. Noise started again. It could be that one of the one of the forks is stripped out, which is common in these units. Uh, the clutch could be bad as well, but more than likely the issues that or the symptom that he has so far is probably going to be one of those uh, forks stripped out. So when you do a clutch job on this thing, well, when I do a clutch job on these things, I replace the, I replace the clutch with uh, both motors and uh, and the shift the, uh, and the, the forks that move the what you used to call the throw out bearing he has two of them in there He's gonna do the touch point for adaptive for clutches that pass friction coefficient pass let's see what fails once it goes to clutch A and B, uh, testing. It's probably gonna fail one of these two right here. Fail, 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 yep. Transmission has to come out. Transmission has to come out. That's a good one to keep for testing because we know that the that the uh, problem is not that. So that can be used for testing another vehicle that you get uh, that you will have an issue like this. You just swap it, look at it, 
and uh, and diagnose it. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm gonna have this guy uh, pull the transmission out, and I'll bring my tools for uh, do the clutch replacement, and we go from there. I'm not sure if it's coming from here, the noise, or from the TCM itself. Or maybe the top actuator, one is for clutch A and the other one is for clutch B. Kind of sounds like it's coming from here. So the shift drums are there. You got one shift drum and the other shift drum actuator the shift drums are inside the transmission i'm gonna go ahead and take the battery off and uh you want to make sure that they are seated all the way which it looks like it it is seated all the way let's take the battery off and uh and check it Okay, so I've got the actuators off for testing. This one came out of here, and there's your uh, uh, throw out bearing or whatever you call that um, fork disengages in there. And you're supposed to turn that uh, 14 turns uh, counterclockwise to release the locks on the, on the clutch. Uh, I'm not sure I did it with the ratchet I mean because it's on the car and I went all the way uh, counterclockwise until it stops and when you feel it that it stops then you know that your uh, your clutch is completely open I'm gonna do the same thing on the on the one on the top and I'm gonna I'm gonna swap the motors I'm gonna put the uh, this actuator motor came out of here so the one that came out of the top I'm gonna put it here and this I'm gonna put it on the top and I'm gonna do the same test on the on the top uh, on the top fork at the shop I disassembled one of these motors uh, to get that shaft so I can use it as a tool to turn that but you can actually use an Allen Allen uh, wrench or an Allen socket and we're gonna turn this counterclockwise it looks kind of rusty in there but we're gonna go counterclockwise to see if, if this uh, fork it's working the way it should so I'm supposed to be able to turn that with an Allen wrench and it's not it's not happening there's a lot of rust in there I think that thing is stripped out I have the tool at the shop but I didn't bring it because I didn't know I was gonna work on this today but that thing looks stripped to me, and I'm trying. I'm trying to counterclockwise, like I did on the other on the other side. And you do 14 turns, but this thing barely grabs. He barely grabs. So this motor, this is the the motor that came out of the bottom. I'm still gonna put it on there. I'm gonna run, run some tests, but I wanted to open the clutch all the way, and I'm not I'm not able to open it open it up because you can see here it strips. I'm not able to uh, turn it counterclockwise to uh, test test the see if it opens or not. I think that that uh, fork is stripped. Okay, so I got everything back together. Let's try this again. That one fork I cannot test it. Okay, so let's go to. Uh, Hot functions, transmission adaptation, transmission control module. It's on the off position. It's on the on position. Let's do the clutch test. So the top fork, I could not go all the way. I mean, I, I went like 
three turns or four turns and then it would it will strip out you know and close back down and I'm thinking that if you saw the rust that was in there it was loose so uh, I'm thinking that the motor doesn't grab as well and uh, and does this thing let's see what happens now so the motor that was on the bottom I put them on top and the top on the bottom and there was rust on the motor itself and the fork or the actuator so uh, let's see if it passes everything Clutch travel test, unit A passed, passed. Error storage detection passed. Okay. I think with what I did. Might have fixed it. All right. We're gonna go wide open throttle. Here we go. I heard both clutches. I heard both clutches. So the motors are good. The motors are good. But that one fork is the, is the issue. As you heard that it was like spinning and spinning and spinning and uh, it, it sounded like it would try to open the clutch and uh, and it would like uh, ratchet back out like uh, straight back out gear shift on shaft a touch point learn for shaft a he's doing those both 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 two things So that is my thought process on trying to diagnose something like this. And uh, whenever we do these units uh, right underneath the battery, there's uh, there's some grounds there that are bolted up on top of the paint, body paint. So what we do, we get our buff, buffing wheel and right where the grounds go uh, bolted up, we clean them up, take the paint off and uh, bolt them back up and put some uh, paint on top of it, you know, kind of protect the surface of the metal. That's just us, that's what we do. All right, 12.24, the clutch is all right, 11.40. I mean, it's about one millimeter, less than a millimeter off uh, from clutch A to clutch B, which is not bad, actually. Press OK to exit. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and give him the good news, the good news and the bad news. So we'll see what's, we'll see what happened, what happens. All right, I think we concluded this. I mean, if I, if I, uh, if we get to re replace the clutch. I mean, if we're going to get to the point to replace that fork, might as well put a clutch in. Because I have to take the clutch off to get to the both forks. And usually when we do a job like this at the shop, we put the clutch, both actuator motors, and both actuators. Or the clutch actuators. All of them at once. So we don't have to deal with it, pull it back out, and have issues later. Alright. Well... Let's give him the good and bad news.